G'day you mob, how's it going? Welcome to this episode of Pete vs Plants. I am Pete, these are the plants. Today, we are actually going to be repotting my Gloriosums. I was about to say Gloriosum, but I actually have two here. And this is the uh, abaxial side, the back side of all the leaves. But I have two just green form Gloriosums that I put in this round terracotta pot a while back and sort of had them racing one another this way. I'm not sure if you can really see it. One of them kind of went off track and has hit the edge and the other one went straight across the middle and has hit the edge here in front of me as well. And um, they are sizing up rapidly. So yeah, the newest leaf here is coming out. So I think it's probably time to pot this up. Although, you know, it may not be the best thing to do when a new leaf is coming out. I just have time today and it really has hit the edge. So I think it's just, you know, get it done. So why have I got all these Adansonii out in front of me? I have these guys and I had set up this kind of like trailing, uh, what do you call it? trailing pot here, like a windowsill pot. But I've noticed that as soon as they sort of start growing down, they start sending out runners and it is not the prettiest thing in the world, to be honest. I mean, you know, it's obviously beauty in the, the eye of the beholder. I don't mind it. Ideally, I think I would have all of these growing up something and creating like a wall of Adansonii, but I just don't have the space for it currently. So I think what we're gonna do is actually take these out, throw them away, and then repurpose this pot for the Gloriosum. But I am sort of thinking, I'm, I really would like that wall of Adansonii. I'm thinking, where could I put that? Where could I fit that? I could try and do it outside. Mm. I guess we could try and do it outside. Maybe I get a trellis. I guess we're going to Bunnings. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Fortunately, they had nothing new since the last time I was here. <laughs> anyway, so I'm looking for another pot to chuck the Gloriosum in. And the trouble is, there are nice ones here, but they're really expensive. I'll have to show you. And the ones that aren't too expensive are just a bit ugly. So like there's these sorts of lengthy ones. They're not the worst thing in the world, but they're not the best thing in the world either. The ones I would really like are these. But they're sixty nine dollars. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna go another one of these. To be honest, look at this. What's that? Like thirteen bucks? Sold. Now for a trellis. So what I ideally want is something like this down here that I can stretch out a bit and um, have cover a bunch of the wall to look along the side here. Hmm. Some other stuff up the back here. Or alternatively, this sort of stuff. Get one of these. Or one of these. Hmm. Not sure what sort of looks nicer, to be honest. They range in a bunch of different prices. I guess I'll do some hunting and I'll show you when I've got something sorted. Okay, so hands are too full. Ended up getting one, I think it's like 90 centimeters by 180 centimeters. So hopefully this fits well. The only thing I'm sort of freaking out about and thinking, how's this gonna work is putting it up against the wall. How am I gonna stabilize it? Any tips? I think if it's really windy, it might get blown down. Might just have to lean some heavy shit up against it or something. <laughs> What's up, kitty cat? I think <laughs> we need to change your name to Shadow. Is you follow me around everywhere, don't you? You're a funny girl. She's so funny though, because she also, despite following me around everywhere, really doesn't like being picked up. So if I go to try and pick her up, she gets very annoyed. But I don't know what you want. Look, you've got some food here. You've got chicken. Look at the chicken we gave you. We gave you a little bit of roast chicken. You're not even eating it. You only had half. What's the deal? What's the deal, dude? She's sassy as as well, aren't you? 
Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I got another one of these. This is probably what I'll put the Gloriosum, the large one in. And what I'm thinking about doing with this, and I'm gonna need to use two hands, but I've chucked the trellis up the back there just to show you. Um, I'll move this across and give you a look. So, I've actually got this. This was originally facing that way, right? So that the vines were all sort of cascading down out of the pot here. But now I have to have it obviously facing the trellis so that hopefully they will grow up the trellis and the leaves will get larger and larger and larger. And I'm thinking about putting it outside here somewhere that I'll have to probably clean up and make some room out there. Okay, so it's a total mess, but I'm thinking this spot here for now at least, it needs to be close enough to be getting bright indirect light. I assume over here probably is fine, but I think here might be okay. Otherwise, mm, I could put it in here to give it a bit of protection from the wind. That might work well, and I could probably wedge it up against this barbecue, but I don't know. We'll see how we go here first, I reckon. And just because we're in a bit of a rush today, I think I'm just gonna leave it sort of half tucked in behind the barbecue to make sure it stays upright. But this is the basic idea, and I'm gonna take these runners and vines and hopefully sort of thread them in and out of the trellis, and it will eventually, hopefully, become like a green wall, I guess, out here. Anyway, let's get back to the Gloriosum. You've got food. It's for attention. Jesus. <laughs> My wife's saying she wants a hug. <laughs> All right, so I've just realized I need to make up a batch of soil. So I have to get into the garage here and lock it so that I can open the garage and the cat doesn't escape because in Australia, it's kind of a big, it's not completely a no-no, but it's a bit of a no-no to have outdoor cats that aren't under supervision effectively because we've got such unique, sorry, I'm just closing up my printer. We've got really unique wildlife here, right? A lot of it is endemic, some of it's, well, quite a lot of it is endangered or threatened, and so it's a bit of a dog act, uh, pun intended, to have an outdoor cat that you're not supervising uh, because it can kill other people's animals, it can give diseases to other cats, it can get diseases, and it can also obviously harm the wildlife. Sorry, this is jiggling around. Where can I put you? I've got, I'm in the process of sorting out all my substrates, so I've got them all sort of nicely aligned here but I'm trying to think where I can put you so that you can watch me make up some soil without the wind. Maybe I'd chuck you on my car. All right, we're gonna chuck you on my car. Hopefully, the tripod is gonna stay upright and the camera doesn't overheat because it's sitting in the sun. All right, so forgive the mess. I've gotta go through a lot of the stuff in here, but yeah, this is real life, guys. Deal with it. <laughs> I'm not one of those beautiful young female YouTubers who has everything under control. I have two young children and a hectic life, and yeah, I make no apologies for it. Okay, I gotta try and remember my my substrate mix. Um, what do I want? So I'm gonna grab chunky perlite over here. As I mentioned before, guys, the best thing you can do if you want a lot of perlite and you want it cheap is to go to a hydroponics store and you will get it for probably a quarter of the price you'd pay at a big box store like Bunnings or something, right? A hardware store. So I got this for, I think it was 35 bucks and it's 100 liters. I think I might just eyeball this to be honest. Yeah, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay. Don't breathe in the fumes. Might just bring that out here in the wind. Although it's kind of blowing the fumes back into the garage. Whew. And some smaller perlite there. I've got some orchid bark here. I have worm castings here. Perlite, soil, and I'm <coughs> <coughs> may have <coughs> inhaled a bit. Or I might just be coughing. Okay, so usually the mix that I have is about five parts soil, though you can, again, mix and match. Four parts perlite. Three pa actually, no. Have I, am I confusing myself? Yeah, I think I am. So I think it's more like five parts orchid bark, four parts perlite, three parts soil, two parts worm castings. I can't remember exactly, but it's a good mix of those things. So you just have to work it out for yourself what works best for you. Basically, the idea I have, the sort of concept I have, is that you want it chunky enough 
that the roots aren't going to sit in water and they won't get root rot and you want it fine enough that it's going to hold on to moisture or at least that it has components in it that are going to hold on to moisture long enough that you don't need to be watering it every single day. So you have to kind of work out that balance. You know, how frequently do you water? Do you want to water? And how, how moist are the roots going to stay in the substrate that you have? So if it dries out quickly and you can sort of handle how quickly it dries out for your watering regime and you're not going to be indirectly underwatering the shit out of your plants, then you've got a good you know, position. And if the mix is loose enough that it's not going to cause overwatering issues, that's the Goldilocks zone, I think. At least that's what I am for. Okay. So I've got my perlite and my soil at about 50-50. Again, I'm just sort of eyeballing this, to be honest. I know you sort of get a feel for what works and what doesn't after a while. And I know for a long time I kind of went way too chunky and it would mean that I'd have to be watering it all the time, which is okay once you, it's, hold on, I'm not gonna breathe while I do this. So it's okay if you can handle watering more frequently, but if you start getting sick of it, which is what I found, I actually started adding in more soil. The only problem is that once you do that, yeah, you, you deal with the underwatering issues or the fact that the soil is getting drier quicker. It's not gonna do that as quickly, but you may have fungus gnat issues. So once I learned to deal with fungus gnat issues by using sort of uh, electric um, insecticide plug-in things around the house and using tanlin, I was like, I don't care anymore about using soil. It doesn't bother me because all the fungus gnats end up dead. And it's a two-pronged approach. So the insecticide is effectively killing the gnats that are flying around and getting close to the plugs that are plugged in around the house. And the tanlin is killing the larvae that are in the soil as they eat the tanlin. There are crystals that expand in their stomach and kill the larvae. So you're attacking multiple life cycles, multiple parts of the same life cycle, if that makes sense. Okay, so this is worm castings. Do I want a bit more bark? Nah, that's probably enough. No, this is soil. What am I doing? Here's Pete, high as a kite. Where did I put the worm castings? Under here. Don't worry guys, I'm not high. If I were high, you would hear me speaking a lot more slowly and definitely stumbling over my words and forgetting what I was talking about. <laughs> not that I'd know. Anyway. Okay, so there's one more component I think that I want in here that I normally chuck in, it's charcoal, but I don't have any charcoal. Now I do have cocoa qua, coir, qua, qua, quire, but I haven't hydrated it, so I might have to give it a miss this time. And so I'm just gonna, again, hold my breath and mix this up. If you're worried about perlite, just wear a mask, but I'm sort of doing it outside, so the wind should move around enough. I'm just going to actively try to avoid inhaling this stuff. Okay, so I have realized there is actually quite a bit of perlite in here, so I'm just going to mix in a bit more soil and maybe some more orchid bark. Jesus. Just another... One to two of the orchid bark, and then I might do two to three more of the soil. <sighs> two is probably enough. Two big ones, just for good measure. All right. Same thing again. Get a breath. Whew. Okay. That looks a bit better to me. So I think, there we go. That is my basic soy mix. I don't know why I did this. Let's get back in there. What are you doing? Oi. All right, so what did we agree, Kelly? No ABBA, no ABBA while I'm recording. She's playing ABBA in the background. Dancing queen. I'm like, mate, you're going to clip the video. YouTube's going to be like, all the royalties will go to ABBA. They're rich enough. So, made up my soil mix. I made it up because I did bring in the sort of dregs that I had in here. Had in that, that bucket. But um, I need to whoop, and be able to fill this. And <laughs> you guys are going to love this. Anyone from Melbourne is going to get this. I have this for the smaller one. How cute is that? 
<laughs> I don't know why I'm so happy, but ah, it's so awesome. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't live in Melbourne, we have these very old trams that go around the cities, right? So Melbourne has a sort of grid set up city and the trams go up and down the different lines. And there are very, very old trams from like the early 1900s that are still in use that look like this effectively, right? That you can still, I think there's a restaurant one. So you can actually get on the tram and go around the city and eat whilst you're um, taking in the scenery. So yeah, I found this at a shop and I was like, I've got to get this. And I totally have to put a Gloriosum in this at some point. Um, the only thing I'm sort of nervous about is that the Gloriosum, the smaller one that I have here, I should probably bring it on camera for you guys. I don't know if you can see it in here, this one at the bottom, it's probably like two thirds the length of this tram. <laughs> So it's probably going to be, uh, yeah, needing to be um, up, upsized pretty quickly. So uh, I guess we'll see how we go, but I need to chuck it in there before it's too big and I can't fit it in there, right? Don't go there, Pete. Don't go there, Pete. Okay, keeping it G-rated. So, ooh, I've got something to mesh mention. Meshin? Mention? I got this new mat from a viewer, Susan. So thank you so much, Susan. She lives outside of Geelong. And she saw the video I posted probably a month or two ago where I was having a bitch about my, um, the mat that I had bought that was just way too big. And so she was very kind enough to create one for me from, yeah, some beautiful plastic material. So thank you so much, Susan. And she gave me a little Christmas hamper with some treats for the kids and some, a beautiful card. And I think, you know what, here it is. Here's the card. My son was actually running around with this. So she bought this beautiful card for me, I wrote a lovely message in here and it plays. I thought too at first, I was like, is this a troll? Is this just gonna keep going and it won't stop until you the batteries run out? It stops. So thank you, Susan, uh, because yeah, my son found this pretty quickly and he wouldn't stop playing it. Would not stop playing it. So, all right. What are we gonna do first? I guess we have to take these two plants out and have a look at them. Have a cheek under the hood, a cheeky peek under the hood. A cheek, a check, a cheeky check under the hood. Um, yeah, so this was sort of a good idea at the start using a um, pot like this. <laughs> but it is definitely hard to uh, kind of manage in terms of unpotting, right? Because it's just so big and cumbersome. And I have a feeling these two plants have probably grown their root systems into one another. So, yeah, sorry if I'm off, off camera behind the plant. The plant is the star of the show, so yeah, no complaints. Nice, okay, so it's got some nice big roots. I wonder how compacted the soil, it's quite compacted. So I might need an implement to give me a hand. And I am just gonna reuse this soil, so I'm just gonna chuck this back into the mix here, because it isn't that old. Okay, what kitchen appliance, tool, thing, implement can I use today to give me a hand? <laughs> I guess, uh, butter knife, I feel like that's gonna be too sharp. Uh, kids spoons, too small. Maybe we will. Okay, so I'm gonna sequester one of these kids spoons, seeing as it is plastic and not too sharp. So hopefully it won't do too much damage to the roots of these plants. And I'm just gonna sort of dig around the edges of the pot so that I can hopefully separate the root system from the side of the pot and more easily get these guys out. I think this is the first and last time that I'm going to use a pot like this for a um, Gloriosum because yeah, it is definitely not the easiest thing to take plants out of. All right, has that loosened it up enough? I think so, okay. I think we're gonna be able to get these puppies out. Yes, okay, too easy. But I need to move the pot out of the way. So put you over the edge. Hopefully I don't damage these plants too much too in the process. Same deal, I'm going to keep this soil. And yeah, thank you for your service, pot. Thank you for your service. Okay, so how easily can I pull these guys apart? Oop. All right, not too bad, I think. Hopefully not too much root damage. So this big one looks like it's got the majority of the root mass here. Uh, definitely 
ruining some of the root tips. Sorry guys. Hopefully you make it. Okay. Tap, tap, tap. And can I, this root ball here, I'm like, which plant do you belong to? Okay. Boom, okay, sweet. It's actually, it's nice when the, the substrate is kind of quite chunky and you can kind of just pull these plants apart without doing too much root damage. That's amazing, okay. Sweet, so this is the small one. Look at her roots, how she roots. <laughs> I'm gonna take off this leaf, this smaller one that has a lot of damage on it. I'm gonna take this one off too. And I'm gonna take this one off too, just because it's a bit fugly. Usually I would leave them on there uh, with, you know, as long as I got like 50% more green on the leaves, but yeah, today, no, changed my mind, trying something else. And it's nice to see that each of these nodes is rooting in well. I could probably propagate this to be honest. And hmm, maybe I should give that a whirl. Should I do it guys? Should I give this a propagation? You know what, I think we'll do it just for the sake of learning. I've got two of these here. The big one has pu is pushing out a leaf as we speak, so I may not dick around with that one too much. This one doesn't look like it's currently pushing out a leaf, so I can probably chop at least that top node off and it has these roots here. Hopefully that would be enough to support the leaf above. Otherwise, I can probably take it back another node, but the root looks tiny here and it has another huge leaf on it. So I feel like that might be too much for the plant to be able to handle. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a razor blade out and we'll give this one a chop. And I guess I'll have to also work out what I'm gonna put the base of it into. Okay. So, razor blade, activated charcoal. I'm gonna throw these leaves out and grab myself some alcohol to disinfect the uh, razor blade. Where is the alcohol? Okay, this is kind of cool. First time I've ever propagated a Gloriosum. So fingers crossed, we do a good job of it. Grab some paper towel here. Give this a clean. This might be one of the last times I use this razor blade. <laughs> it's getting pretty filthy. So, yes. All right. Wish me luck, guys. So I'm going in. Oof. Going in for the kill. What was that band again that, that uh, sang that song? They were sort of a one hit wonder. I had a really good first album. I'm going in for the kill, doing it for the thrill. Now let go of my hand. And then they kind of just disappeared. Yeah, okay. So tiny bit of, where can I put this that is going to be accessible for me. Okay, that should be enough. So this is just some activated charcoal. It's effectively just powder, right? Black powder. I probably wouldn't recommend doing a line of it. You could probably brush your teeth with it. <laughs> in fact, it's probably what they just use to put in a toothpaste that is used for whitening, right? But yes, so here is the cutting. And yeah, I guess what we could do is plant both of them up at the base here of the tram. So I could sort of fit this guy in right at the edge. I could even chuck the edge where I have cut over the tip of the tram to just make sure that we avoid soil contamination with the area there. And I could also chuck the base in just so that we could keep an eye on both of them. I'm not sure. It would probably not be a great amount of space in here eventually, but I have a feeling this one's gonna hit the end really quickly anyway. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we do that. I'm, I'm sick of sort of potting up too many multiples around the house. So I'm just gonna put this one down and we'll take this cutting and I'm gonna use the activated charcoal on this one too. Okay, there we go. So try and get every last little bit of it in here. Quite a bit of <laughs> extra charcoal, okay. So that's how that one looks. This one will probably recover really quickly, right? Look at those, those roots. Um, 
Now, what have I got to do? I have to take out the little plastic nubbin thing at the base of this pot so that it drains. There we go. Pew! And so I'm going to mix this soil up again, seeing as I put some of the finer stuff in there. Sorry, you can't see what's going on. And I've misplaced my little shovel. I need to go find that back in a tick. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. All right, so let's put a little base layer of soil in the tram. Nice, it's looking good. Oof. And I guess we will make it so hopefully, yeah, okay, this is gonna be interesting. The leaves are gonna be facing opposite directions, it looks like, even though they were taken from the same plant. So it is weird. I guess it was sort of sitting like this, but hopefully they turn around. They should sort of turn and face the same direction to get the light. All right, so I might just situate them there like this. I'm gonna to have to do this off camera, guys, so that I can hold them and put the soil in at the same time. And I'll show you what's going on afterwards. <laughs> Now I have kind of broken a rule of not letting these callus over and allowing the soil to sort of touch the, touch the ends, although I have put that active, activated charcoal over them. But I'm kind of interested to, because I'm not too emotionally attached to these plants and they're not investment plants, I'm sort of interested to see what will happen and if they can handle it. Now I'm probably gonna have to stake this big one up because I think it wants to sort of fall over. The smaller one seems fine but this one is gonna need a stake of some kind. Do I have, I do, I have a chopstick behind me. So I think what I'll do is gently put that into the soil in front of it. And we will grab some horticultural tape and a knifey knife. Boom. Soft side of the tape on the inside, not too tight, but firm. And uh, boom, there you go, sweet. Okay, so that one I think is done. Now what I have done is kind of half submerge the uh, vine of the plants. I'm not sure if you can see here, but because the roots kind of pop out all directions around each node, if you want as many roots as possible to dig into the soil, you're gonna wanna sink it down a little bit, but you don't want to sink it completely below the soil because it can end up rotting as a result. So you do want the sort of top 50% of the vine, that surface, what would you say? Yeah, the yeah, top 50% to be above the soil line at a minimum. So yeah, and I guess we'll see how we go with this guys. I've never propagated a crawling philodendron, so I'm hoping this goes well. And um, yeah, ding, ding. <laughs> that was the sound of the tram. So I think this is gonna look really nice on the shelf like this with the leaves facing out. So I might go, I actually have to give this guy water, don't I? Give him a quick water and chuck him on the shelf and we'll get onto the second one. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just, just gonna sit that one there on the sink, letting the water drain off. I only sort of gave it a light water around where the roots were, actually a heavier one there where the roots were and then a lighter one where the soil is at the end of the pot so that that soil doesn't end up way too moist and there's nothing pulling the moisture out, hopefully. At least that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm gonna put some soil in the bottom of this, ugh, this pot. This will be an interesting one too. I have to think about managing the watering with these guys, seeing as there's only roots at one end. All right, so you don't wanna overdo it. I think I have seen, I've seen people kinda put in like little brackets and they kind of just keep extending it and adding more soil as the plant grows. You could do that. It's kind of ugly and it kind of requires a bit more attention, I think. But, you know, if that's what you're into, then yeah, give it a whirl. So, I guess we're just going to chuck this guy in as far to the back as possible. Roots all in. And again, I think I'm going to have to do this off camera just because the pot is so huge. So forgive me, guys. I will be back. Okay. So I guess we're done potting this guy up too. Again, I'm just gonna have to be sort of wary with watering this guy and testing the soil and making sure it's definitely damp, uh, definitely damp, definitely dry when I need to rewater it in the future because it's probably gonna take quite a while to dry out considering half the pot doesn't have a plant in it. Um, yeah, so that's been fun. 
Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check this one out here and I will keep you updated with how these guys go. See you later.